Slave. What if Superman's S actually stood for slave? Oh, wow. Welcome to Cosmic Comic Clips Comic Review Podcast. All right. Today, we're diving deep into absolute Superman number one. Yeah. And uh, this comic really flips the script on everything we thought we knew about the Man of Steel. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right off the bat, we are just thrown into this yeah. dystopian Krypton on the verge of collapse. Right. And that iconic S symbol is no longer a beacon of hope. Right. It marks the lowest caste. Wow. The laborers forced to mine the planet's resources until it's practically crumbling. Yeah. And in this reality, yor and Lara... Right. They aren't high-ranking scientists. No. Nope. They're workers. Yeah, they're part of this class of steel. Right. Fighting for a dying planet that seems hell-bent on destroying itself. Yeah, and that's what's so fascinating here. Yeah. The kryptonite in this story right. is a direct result of Krypton's overmining. It's like this <laughs> poisonous consequence of their own actions. Then we jump to Earth. But it's not the hopeful world Superman usually arrives on. Right. This time he's in Brazil. Oh, wow. Standing up for migrant workers being exploited by the corrupt... Lazarus Corporation. Interesting. It seems even in this twisted reality that inherent drive for justice is still a part of him. Yeah, but here's the catch. Yeah. He's not the all-powerful Superman we're used to. Right. He's relying on this high-tech suit. Oh, really? Called Soul that's powered by solar energy. It's mm -hmm. almost like a blend of Iron Man and Superman <laughs> using saying? technology to level the playing field. It makes you wonder, is this suit just a tool or is there something more going on? Could it be sentient, like an extension of his will? It really does make you wonder. And then there's Lois Lane. Oh, yeah. Forget the intrepid reporter. Uh -huh. In this universe, she's working for the very corporation Superman is fighting. Oh, wow. She's tough, cynical, and totally on the opposite side of justice. It's a complete 180 from what we're used to. I know, and she's the one who sarcastically gives him the name Superman. Oh, wow. Talk about adding insult to injury. Ouch. And then we have this shadowy figure of Brainiac, uh -huh. who seems to be pulling the strings behind the Lazarus Corporation. Pulling the strings. What's his game in all this? We only get glimpses, but it's clear he's got a major role to play. Yeah, he's got a big part to play, for sure. And that iconic Kent farm. Right. It's seen better days. Yeah. It's dilapidated and controlled by the Lazarus Corporation. Huh. So clearly, Superman's connection to Earth is going to be very different in this story. Very different. And we haven't even touched on how Superman arrived on Earth. Yeah. How'd he get here? He wasn't sent as a baby. Right. He grew up on Krypton. Oh, wow. Experiencing its decline and his parents' struggles firsthand. That's crazy. It makes you think about how that kind of upbringing would shape someone. Yeah. Even someone as inherently good as Superman. It makes you wonder if he can still be a symbol of hope if he was raised in a world devoid of it. We get these flashes of Kryptonian society throughout the comic. Right. And uh, it's technologically advanced. Yeah. But deeply divided. Yeah. You have the Science League, the ruling class, obsessed with progress at any cost, even if it means exploiting their own people and destroying the planet. And it's not just about the technology. It's right. their whole culture. Uh -huh. The way they dress, the architecture, it's all very sleek, almost sterile. Yeah. You can sense the rigid social hierarchy just from those details. Exactly. And then you have Jor-El and Lara fighting for change right. for a more sustainable future. Right. They represent the conscience of Krypton, warning everyone about the consequences of their actions. Right. But will anyone listen? It doesn't seem like it. This comic really doesn't shy away from the brutality of its collapse. No, it doesn't. We see the planet literally tearing itself apart as a result of the Science League's actions. Oh. It's a pretty powerful visual. And it makes you think about the fragility of even the most advanced civilizations. It really is. And then there's Superman. Yeah. He arrives on Earth, not as a baby, but as a young man, yeah. hardened by what he's seen and experienced. Right. He's carrying the weight of a lost world on his shoulders. Heavy is the head that wears the crown. If you're enjoying this deep dive into Absolute Superman, yes. don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to Cosmic Comic Clips for more comic book deep dives. Absolutely. Let us know in the comments what you think of this radical new take on Superman. Yeah, what do you think? But for now, let's get back to it. Okay. This new Superman doesn't have the same powers we're used to. Right. He needs that suit to survive, to fight. Interesting. And even his strength seems different. Oh. It's more grounded, like he has to work for it. Huh. We see him struggling, pushing himself to the limit. Right. It makes you realize he's not invincible. 
even with the suit. Yeah, it's like they're saying that even Superman has vulnerabilities. He's still a symbol of hope, but he's also more human. Yeah. More relatable in a way. And then there's Lois. Right. To see her working for the very force that Superman's fighting against is just wild. Yeah. Her whole demeanor is different. Mm. She's cold, calculating. Right. It's like she's seen too much of the world's darkness and lost her faith in things like hope and justice. Yeah, it makes you wonder what happened to her in this reality that made her so cynical. Right. Is she truly a villain or is she just fighting for survival in a world that's lost its way? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh-huh. And uh, let's not forget Brainiac lurking in the shadows. Oh, yeah. We don't see him much in this first issue. Right. But his presence is definitely felt. Right. It's like a puppet master. Yeah. Orchestrating events from behind the scenes. What's interesting is that he's not just some evil mastermind. He's presented as this hyper-intelligent being. Right. Who's fascinated by civilizations. Yeah. By how they rise and fall. It makes you wonder if he sees the destruction of Krypton. Right. And the chaos on Earth yeah. as some kind of experiment. And then there's the State of the Kent farm. Right. It's not the idyllic haven we're used to seeing. No. It's run down. Right. Controlled by the Lazarus Corporation. Yeah. It's almost like a symbol of everything that's wrong with this world. Right. And it raises the question. Yeah. What happened to the Kents in this reality? Uh-huh. Were they victims of the corporation's greed? Right. Did they resist and pay the price? Yeah. There are so many possibilities and it makes you eager to find out more. Right. This Superman, he seems more world weary. Right. Like he's already seen his fair share of darkness. Yeah. He's not wide-eyed and optimistic. All right. He's driven by a sense of duty, right. a need to right the wrongs he sees. That's what makes him so compelling. Yeah. He's not just a superhero. Uh-huh. He's a survivor, a refugee from a lost world. Right. He's trying to make sense of this new world to find his place in it. He's still fighting for justice. Right. But it's a different kind of fight. Yeah. It's more desperate, more personal. He's not yeah. just saving the world. Uh, right. He's trying to salvage something from the wreckage. And that makes his relationship with Lois even more intriguing. Mm -hmm. They're on opposite sides of a very complex conflict. Right. Can they even understand each other? Yeah. Let alone work together. It's like their dynamic is a microcosm of the larger struggle between hope and despair. Yeah. Between those who believe in a better future right. and those who have given up. And then there are these peacemakers. We see right. these soldiers working for the Lazarus Corporation. Yeah. It's like they represent the iron fist of this corporate power right. rushing any dissent. And it makes you wonder, are they brainwashed? Yeah. Are they just following orders? Right. Or do they truly believe in what they're doing? It's another layer of complexity in oh. a story that's already packed with it. Right. And then there's that final scene with Jor-El. Yeah. It's like a punch to the gut. He's sending Kal-El to Earth. Right. But it's not the baby we're used to seeing. Right. It's an older Superman. Right. A Superman who's already experienced so much loss and hardship. It makes you question everything. Yeah. What kind of Superman will this be? Right. What will his mission be? Uh-huh. How will he interact with this version of Earth and its inhabitants? It's like... The story is starting over, but with a completely different set of rules. Right. <laughs> it's both exciting and terrifying. And it makes you realize that Absolute Superman is not just a reimagining of a classic character. Okay. It's a reflection of our own anxieties, our own fears about the future. It's a story about what happens when hope is in short supply. Yeah. When the line between good and evil becomes blurred. Right. And it's a story that asks us, what would we do in Superman's place? Yeah, it really is a story that makes you think. Uh-huh. And that's what I love about it. Yeah. It's not just a superhero punch fest, mm -hmm. you know? It's got depth. It does. It's got heart and it's got me seriously hooked. And that's what makes Absolute Superman so compelling right it takes everything we thought we knew about the man of steel right and turns it on its head yeah it asks us to reconsider what it means to be a hero to have hope uh -huh. in a world that seems determined to crush it this superman is flawed right he's vulnerable yeah but he's still fighting he is he's still trying to make a difference yeah even in this dark and twisted reality it's a powerful message. It is. And one that resonates deeply in today's world. It does. It reminds us that even when faced with overwhelming odds, mm -hmm. even when surrounded by darkness, we can still choose to fight for what's right. Absolute Superman, number one, is a must read for any comic book fan. It is. Even if you think you know everything about Superman. Yeah. It's dark. Mm -hmm. It's gritty. Yeah. But it's also 
incredibly thought provoking. And it will stay with you long after you finish reading it. Right. And one that will leave you eagerly anticipating the next chapter in this bold and unpredictable saga. So what are you waiting yeah. for? Go grab a copy of Absolute Superman number one. Definitely. And see for yourself. And be sure to. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Cosmic Comic Clips for more mind-blowing comic deep dives. See you next time.